Ms. Anderson here. Today we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences. Our goal is to find the common difference um, and be able to write a rule for an arithmetic sequence. It's different than a geometric sequence because an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where you have um, the difference between each term in the pattern is consecutive and it's constant. And we call that difference our common difference and we use the letter D to no notate that. And then we're also going to have a new vocab term with our sequences with this particular sequence and that's going to be a sub zero and that's going to be the term the zero term before the first term so here's a couple just to get us started you can see this pattern if you start with like three seven eleven hopefully you can recognize that those numbers are increasing by four so our next term would be 15 and our next term after that would be 19. And then if we look at the next example, 8, 3, negative 2, you can see that that pattern of numbers is decreasing by 5. And so our next pattern, our next number in our pattern would be negative 7, and then would be to negative 12. So these are both examples of arithmetic sequences that have a common difference or a term, a difference between each term. In this one, our common difference was 4, and in this one, our common difference was negative 5. So being able to identify if it is an arithmetic sequence is just being able to find um, if it's changing at a constant rate every time. So in our first example, from negative 10 to negative 6 is a difference of adding 4. Let's see if that stays consistent. From negative 6 to negative 2 is adding 4 negative 2 to 0 is adding 2. So this one would be not arithmetic because it switches from adding 4 to adding 2. So there might be a pattern. It could still be identified as a sequence, but it's not this type of sequence because that common difference is not the same between every term. In this one, we have 5 plus 6 would give me 11. 11 plus 6 would give me 17. 17 plus 6 would give me 23. And that one works out too. So this one is arithmetic. And if it is, then we can notate our common difference of 6. So writing a rule for an arithmetic sequence is given by this equation. So the nth term with the first term is a sub 1, common difference is d. Our rule is a sub n equals dn plus a sub 0. And this is going to be similar to the equation y equals mx plus b. And if you remember the equation mx plus b, the m represents our slope or our rate of change and b is our y-intercept which is always our zero point and our starting value and so arithmetic sequences are linear equations and so we use different variables to represent the rate of change and the starting value in these in the in this sequence formula but our d is going to be similar to our slope that's our constant rate of change and your a sub zero term is going to be the term before the first term oh first term and it represents your starting value or your y-intercept essentially so we're going to write a rule for the nth term of this sequence. If we go from 32 to 47, 62, 77, it looks like we are going up by 15. So positive 15 is going to be our rate of change or our common difference. And then a sub 1, our first term in this sequence is 32. So to find our term before that, our a sub 0 term, we're going to do the opposite. Since we're increasing by 15, we're going to go back by 15. We're going to find that to be 17, and that's going to be your a sub 0 term. And then our rule, a sub n is going to be like our y equals, is going to be 15n plus 17. And that will represent our sequence. And we use our a sub 0 term because then when we plug in 1 for our n, we want to get our very first term right here. 
So we want to make sure that we use our a sub 0 term. So then we take 15 times 1. We get 15 plus 17 gives us our first term, a sub 1. And then if I want to find a sub 12, that's looking for the 12th term in this sequence. And you can use your rule by then substituting in the value 12 for your n. And 15 times 12 plus 17. would be 197. So the 12th term in the sequence would be 197. Or that would also represent, if you were to like think about this graphically, the ordered pair 12, 197. That's your input, this is your output, your n, your a sub n. All right, let's try it again. This sequence, 30, 25, 20, 15, is decreasing at a common or at a common difference of minus five each time so our d is going to be negative five our first term is 30 which means if we were to go back the term before that since you're subtracting five every time the first term would be 35 or the a sub zero term would be 35. And we could write our rule which is going to be dn plus a sub zero so a sub n equals negative five n plus 35. And then a sub 10 means find the 10th term in the sequence. And you can use your formula for that by plugging in 10 for the n spot, which would be negative 50 plus 35, which would be negative 15. It means your 10th term would be negative 15. Okay. Let's see if we can write the rule given some other information. So if I give you the a sub 5 is 30 and the common difference is 4. So a sub 5 is 30 means that that is the fifth term is 30, which is when you plug in 5 for n, your output is 30, and then the common difference is 4. So you want to start with your general equation, a sub n equals dn plus a sub 0. And in order to write the rule, we need to know what the common difference is and what the a sub 0 term is. Now you have the fifth term and you know you're adding 4 every time, so you could work backwards to find a sub 0 or you can solve for it algebraically. We have, when we plug in n equals 5, our output is 30. So we're going to start with that. So we'll do 30 is equal to d times 5 Oops, I know what D is too. D is 4 times 5 plus A sub 0. So I plugged in D for 4 right there. And then I plugged in 5 for my N right here. And then I also plugged in 30 for my A sub N spot. So now I have all of, all of the variables accounted for except for a sub 0. So now I can go ahead and solve for a sub 0. So 30 equals 4 times 5 is 20 plus a sub 0 minus 20 on both sides. We get a sub 0 equals 10. So then a sub 0 is 10 and d was 4. So my rule then for this sequence would be 4n plus 10. And then if you wanted to just double check that you were right, we knew that the fifth term was equal to 30, so 4 times 5 plus 10 does give us 30. So we have our rule correct. Okay, finding the nth term given two terms. This is going to be similar to the one we did with geometric sequences. So we're going to set up a system and use substitution to solve. It's just going to be a little bit different because it's a linear equation instead of a geometric equation. So I'm giving you two terms. The fifth term is 10 and the 30th term is 110. So first you're going to want to write those as ordered pairs. 5 is our input, 10 is our output, the fifth term is 10, and then the 30th term is 110. So n is your input, a sub n is your output there. And then you're going to use your general equation, a n equals d n plus a sub 0, and you're going to be plugging in um, a sub n and n into each of these 
and then your goal is to solve for d in a sub zero. So my first one, it's gonna be 10 equals d times five is gonna give you five d plus a sub zero. And then over here, it's gonna be 110 equals d times 30 is gonna be 30 d plus a sub zero. Now, similar to what we did in the geometric um, problems, we wanna solve by substitution. So we want to get the a sub zero by itself, substitute it back into the other side. But because this is linear, we have 5d plus a sub zero. So to get a sub zero by itself, we have to subtract, use our inverse operation. Since it's positive 5d, we'll have to subtract. These are not like terms, so you can't put them together. So you're just gonna get 10 minus 5d equals a sub zero. Now you're gonna do a substitution. This is what a sub zero equals, so you're gonna take that over to this equation and plug it in for your a sub zero spot. So that's gonna give you 110 equals 30d plus, and then 10 minus 5d, and that was where my a sub zero was. And now I've replaced it with my other a sub zero term. Then I'm gonna solve for d. So since I have two d terms on the same side of the equal, I'm gonna combine like terms there, and that's gonna give me 25d plus 10. Finish solving, get the variable by itself, subtract 10 on both sides. 100 is 25d, divide by 25, and d equals four. Okay, then that's what d equals. Now I have to do a substitution again because we also need to know, so we'll need what d equals, but we also need to know what a sub zero equals. So we're gonna take that d and we're gonna plug it back in over here for this spot to figure out what a sub zero was. So that's gonna be 10 minus five times four is gonna be a sub zero, which is 10 minus 20. So negative 10 would be our a sub zero term. So now that we have both the terms, a and a sub zero and d, we can write our rule. So a sub n will equal four n, because it's dn, plus a sub zero, so plus negative 10 or minus 10. So that's our rule. Then this last question kind of got um, a little bit, I took up a lot of space here, but the last question was asking you to find the value for n for which a sub n equals two. Remember your a sub n is the same thing as like your y equals. So it's asking you to plug in negative two for the output and figure out what the input would be. So I'd be like doing negative two equals four n minus 10 and then solving for n. So adding 10, we get eight equals four n. So then n would equal two. So the last question there, find the value for n for which the output is negative two, that would be n equals two, or you could say that that would be the second term, a sub two equals negative two. And that's it for arithmetic sequences. Thanks for watching.